everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we're making Nadia's wonderfully warm mittens. These are so warm, super fabulous, super chunky, and super easy to make. So I'm going to show you how to make one mitten, and then you can make the other one exactly the same because there's no right or left hand. It's perfect for just a quick and easy afternoon project. So I'll get into the supplies we need, get into some frequently asked questions on sizing because we don't all have the same size hand and then I'll get into making this fabulous project. So a big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing today's yarn for this project. We are using Evermore yarn. This is the first, I think this is the first time I'm using this yarn actually. It is super soft. It is um, a very thick yarn. It is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. So if you have any wool allergies or anything, just make sure to use a super bulky yarn that is comfortable on your hands. So you can see here this size six, super bulky. It is very thick yarn here, as you can see, and it is super soft. It's, um, it looks almost like a hand spun type of yarn. It's like spun really nicely. So that is Evermore yarn. The specific color I'm using, if you want to use the same exact color as me, I'm using Emerald Isle, but they have many different color options on Red Heart Yarns website or at any craft store that holds Red Heart Yarns, you can get this yarn. These are 89 yard skeins and I had to use two skeins of this. I actually used 170 yards of yarn for this project. So I just bought two skeins of this yarn and you can use this, um, just two skeins of this for this easy project. So the size hook I'm using today is a K size hook, which is six and a half millimeters. This specific hook is from the Etsy shop Would Be Fancy. It is an, a hand carved ergonomic wooden handled hook and it is so fabulous. I share this in every one of my videos. You can get different designs, different types of wood. You can hold your hook, you know, like this if you hold it like a pen or like this if you hold it uh, like a knife. So it's very easy to use and I really love these hooks a lot. I promote them everywhere on Snapchat, Facebook, everywhere. Also, you're going to need a scissors, a yarn needle, a stitch marker, which if you have a legit stitch marker, you can use those little plastic ones, but I'm just using a, an extra piece of yarn that's a different color to mark my rounds because some of this pattern is worked in continuous rounds. So I just use an extra piece of yarn to mark my rounds. Now as for sizing, my mittens that I'm making today from top to bottom are about 10 and a half inches which is about 26 centimeters, okay, from top to bottom. And the width of it, I'll measure from the thumb, from this part of the thumb across to here, is about nine centimeters, which is about three and a half inches. So um, it, says, it does actually stretch quite a bit, but um, you can uh, make this a little bigger by following along with this video tutorial and also checking out the written pattern on yarnutopia.com. Uh, there are ways to make this part wider. So if you have wider hands than me, um, you can make this part wider and also longer. So I have um, pretty, um, I guess, small sized hands, medium sized hands. So you can make this wider and this part longer as well as the thumb longer and this part longer. So in the written instructions on my website, it does share all that information. And throughout this video, I'll give you tips and tricks on how to make these, uh, what to, what's rounds to repeat to make these longer. Longer. So these are the fabulous mittens. And like I said, though, it's a reef, it's the same pattern. Um, there's no right or left hand. So we're just making one and then we'll get into, uh, you can make it, the other one exactly the same. So that's all. Uh, now, before we begin, there are links in the description of this video, link to the blog where you'll get the free written pattern. You can also get the printable download of this pattern on my Etsy, um, which you can check out too. And also there's a link to Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to follow me on social media so you can get the update on when I post a new pattern, a new design. And also you can follow me on Snapchat. I'm Yarn Utopia on there. Be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. That is a big deal to us here. We really appreciate all your support in subscribing and liking our videos. So make sure you continue to do that and share our videos with everybody who you know who likes to crochet so that they can see 
new projects as well. So uh, that's all I have today. Uh, if you have any questions or want to uh, see everything, check out the Facebook, write to me on Facebook if you have any questions, or check out the written pattern in the notes section. There will be all that information for the sizing and everything. So big thank you to Red Heart Yarns here. Big thank you to my dad for filming and editing, and big thank you to you for watching. So let's get started and make these wonderfully warm mittens. All right, let's start out with a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, then fold this down over the long end and pull the long end through and pull tight. Just like that, there's your slip knot. You can insert your hook and we can start. So let's start out by chaining two. So yarn over and pull through one and two. And in the second chain from the hook, we are going to put six single crochets. So this chain right here, we're going to go into there, then yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, that's a single crochet. So go back into that same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops. There's two, go back in, here's three, go in, there's four, four, five, and six. And you can see I was working in a circular form, working around, kind of turning this around. And at this point, uh, you should have six stitches for round one. We're gonna go on to round two. I need to grab a stitch marker. I actually don't have um, a legit stitch marker. I just have a extra piece of yarn, so I'm just going to use that. And I'm just going to stick that into this spot right here where it marks the beginning and end of my rounds. Okay, just so I know where I'm going because we're working in continuous rounds now. So going on to round two, we're going to work into this stitch right here. We're going to put two single crochets into this next stitch right here. So right in this first stitch right here, we're going to make two single crochets. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna put two single crochets in every stitch around. So in this next stitch, put two single crochets. One and two. Hop to the next, one and two. Okay, and in the next. At the end of round two, you should have 12 single crochets. And I just have two stitches left to work into, so you can just continue watching me. And we can go on to round three. Okay, so at this point, I met up at my uh, stitch marker here. We're going to just move that up to the next round. I have my 12 stitches. Going on to round three, we are going to increase again. So let's put two single crochets in this next stitch right here. One and two. And just put one single crochet in the stitch after that. So one. And then that whole sequence there, those three stitches, just repeat that sequence all the way around. So put two single crochets in the next stitch one and two, and then one single crochet in the next, just like that. And then two single crochets in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next, okay? So at the end of round three, we will have 18 single crochets. And I'm almost there, you can just continue watching here. Let's see, one, two, and three. Okay, last repeat, you can see my stitch marker right there. So one, two, and three, awesome. So you should have 18 stitches now at this point. Going on to round four, we're done increasing at this point. Um, if you want to uh, see how it would fit on your hand, you can kind of just have your hand here, go on one side, make sure this center circle kind of hits the top of your finger right here. Okay, you can kind of see my finger through there. And kind of just fold it over. And if it covers all four of your fingers up top here, then it is wide enough, okay? If, if, if you feel like it's not wide enough, um, you can increase again, again, and I have that written instruction in my website on the pattern, uh, written instructions. Anyway, going on to round four, we are just going to put one single crochet in each stitch around. So going around, 
just putting one single crochet into each stitch. So again, for round four, you'll still have the same amount of stitches, 18 single crochets around. So I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you up for round five. All right, so I just single crocheted around, so still the 18 stitches. So moving our stitch mark, actually, you don't really have to move your stitch marker up if you don't want to, um, but I'm going to here. So what we're going to do now, instead of um, continuing in the round, we're actually going to slip stitch in the very next stitch, and then we'll go on to uh, round five. So going into this next stitch right here, this first stitch, we're going to go into there, then yarn over and pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook and pull tight, as tight as you can. That does not count as a stitch, that is just getting into the next stitch here. Now what we're going to do is chain up two. So yarn over and pull through, one and two. Now that chain up two does not count as anything, so do not slip stitch into that, don't use that as a stitch or anything. What we're going to do for round five is double crochet into every stitch, including the stitch that we just slip stitched into. So yarn over, go back into that stitch that we just slip stitched into, okay, then yarn over and pull through. So now we have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two of the loops, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. And that is a double crochet. Now in every stitch around we are going to double crochet, so yarn over, go into this next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. And just continue. So you should have 18 double crochets at the end of this round. I will meet you up at the end of this round and we'll go on to round six. All right, just finishing round five here. You should have 18 double crochets. Now, just ignore this chain up two here. One, two. We are going to slip stitch into the first double crochet, okay? This chain up two, like I said, does not count as anything. So just ignore that. Go into this double crochet right here and slip stitch. So go in, then yarn over and pull through, and then pull through the loop on your hook to close that round. So again, you should have 18 double crochets. Do not count that chain up two. Going on to round six now, we're just gonna chain up one. So yarn over and pull through. And again, that, that chain up one does not count as anything, okay? We're going to work around the first double crochet stitch here, okay? We just slip stitched into, not the chain up two. So go into this, round, around this stitch we're gonna work. Uh, we're gonna do front post double crochets and back post double crochets on this round. So this stitch right here, we are going to yarn over, go on this side in front of the stitch around the post, Okay, around that post, then yarn over and pull it through, okay, and then just finish it like a regular double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and there is a front post double crochet. Now on the next stitch, we are going to do a back post double crochet. So yarn over, and then we're going to go behind the work into the mitten right here, around this next post back to the back of the work, okay, then yarn over and pull that through, okay, and then just finish it like a regular double crochet, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that is a back post double crochet. So we're going to alternate these two stitches all the way around. So this next stitch right here will have a front post double crochet. So yarn over, go into the front around the post, then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then the next stitch will have a back post. So yarn over, go behind the work around to the back again, yarn over, pull it through, and then yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so we're just gonna alternate those two stitches all the way around with the same amount of stitches, 18 stitches around. So I'll do that and then I will meet you up for round seven. All right, you'll end this round with a back post double crochet stitch, okay? That should be your last stitch. And now what we're going to do, we're going to ignore this chain up one right here, and we're actually gonna go into the first front post double crochet stitch, and we're gonna slip stitch into that stitch right there. So go in, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook, just like that. 
All right, so you can see the, the ribbing effect is taking place now. It looks fabulous. So now what we're going to do is just repeat round six for rounds seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So the next five rounds are going to be chain up one, front post double crochet on the front post double crochet stitches, this first one right here, and then back post double crochet on the back post double crochet stitches. So this next one here. And just alternate the two stitches, uh, front post double crochets and back post double crochets. And always front post double crochet on a front post double crochet and always back post double crochet on a back post double crochet. And we're going to do that and then we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch and then chain up one and go on to the next round. And we're going to do this for rounds 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So when I'm finished with round 11, I'll come back on screen here and we'll go on to round 12 together. All right, when you finish round 11, slip stitch to the first one here, I'm going to pull this up and show you. If you need to make this longer, um, what you need to do right now is just stick your hand into here. Okay, or the person's hand that you're making these for. And if it, um, stretch it out here. There we go. And then if it hits your thumb right where it should, right here. If it hits your thumb right here, then that is where you should stop. If yours is a little short, if it's even right here, you want to do an extra round or two or something. Just uh, make it more comfortable. So just keep repeating this rib look. Look at how fabulous that looks, by the way. And the color change is so awesome. So I'm really loving this yarn. It's super soft and super fashionable and super warm for perfect for mittens. So um, yeah, if you uh, have this just a little bit too short here, just do an extra round or two and uh, of this ribbed look here and then just go on to the instructions for round 12. So that's how you need to make these longer, just repeating this uh, section. So when you have it as long as you want it to be, let's go on to the instructions for round 12. So we've slip stitched to the first uh, front post double crochet here and for round 12 it says to chain up one, so yarn over and pull through. But that chain up one, again, does not count as anything. It just gets us to where we need to be for this round. So for round 12, it says single crochet into every stitch around, but do not slip stitch to the first uh, stitch when you come back around. So in this very first stitch that we just slip stitched into, right here, this front post double crochet, we're going to go back into there where we slip stitched, then yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so just like we did in rounds one through four here, we're just going to single crochet into each stitch around for the same amount of stitches, which is 18 stitches around. Okay, super simple. So I'm just going to single crochet around and I'll meet you up for round 13. All right, so I've single crocheted around, so just ignore this is a slip stitch right here, and then this is a chain up one right there. So just ignore those two. If you need to count around from this stitch here all the way around, you should have 18 single crochets. So at this point, we are going to go on to um, the next round here, round 13. But I'm, I have the stitch marker here. At this point, I'm going to put my stitch marker in here just to mark my round. Okay, because we are going to work in continuous rounds at this point. So at this point now for round 13, we are going to chain three. So yarn over, pull through one, two, and three. And we're going to skip this first single crochet, this next one, and this next one. So skip the first three stitches here and go into this next one here for a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now, if this thumb hole is too small for your thumb, you can stick your thumb in there. If it's too small, mine's really extra large, but if you if it's too small for you, uh, you can uh, chain four and skip four stitches. Okay, that's totally fine too. So that is how you can make the thumb hole bigger. But I chained three and I felt like that was enough room for my thumb to breathe and feel comfortable inside my mitten. So now we're going to just single crochet into the rest of the stitches around. So at the end of this round, I'm going to have 15 
single crochets around and then that chain three space. If you chain four and skipped four stitches, then you should have 14 stitches around. So um, just uh, do the thumb hole accordingly to how you're comfortable with. But I'm just going to single crochet around here. Actually, I'm close to being done. So you can just continue watching. We'll go on to round 14 next. And what we're going to do, I'm going to move my stitch marker up. Okay, so we end right before this chain three space here. Moving my stitch marker up here. Round 14 says to single crochet in each of the chains of this chain three space here. So what I'm going to do is flip this backwards, kind of flip it underneath. You can see these back ridges. Okay, there's a back ridge there, back ridge there, and on this one, the back ridge is right there. There it is, right there. So I'm going to work in those back ridges. You can work in any loop of the chains, really. So I'm just going to flip it toward me like this, go into this first one right here, okay? And then we're just going to single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And that's our first one of this next round here, round 14. We're single crocheting in each one of these chains. And that has the thumb hole open right there, you can see. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just single crochet into each stitch around. So a very simple round again, just single crochet all the way around. And then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round 15 for a decrease. All right, so I just finished round 14. You should still have uh, 18 stitches all the way around. So at this point, if you want to do a decrease, if you want it tighter, like around your wrist area, you can continue to follow along here. But if you are not interested in doing a decrease, just single crochet around this next round for round 15. Um, just do a, a single crochet around for 18 stitches but if you want to do a decrease like me to kind of make it tighter around the wrist we're going to decrease by doing a single crochet two together stitch so go into this next stitch here I'll move my stitch marker up so going into this next stitch right here yarn over pull through go right into the next stitch right here yarn over pull through and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and that is a single crochet two together or a single crochet decrease now we're just going to single crochet into the next seven stitches here. So regular single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to decrease again. So single crochet two together. So this stitch right here, go in, yarn over, pull through, go into the next stitch, then yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through all three loops. And there's your single crochet decrease. And now you should have seven stitches left, so we're gonna single crochet in the last seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And there's our stitch marker, so yep. We should have 16 stitches at the end of this round. Unless you just you didn't do a decrease, uh, then you should have 18. But moving on to the next round, rounds 16 and 17. The next two rounds, we're just going to move our stitch marker up and put one single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds. Just single crochet in each stitch, then move the stitch marker up and single crochet around. So that's for round 16 and 17. I'll come back and we'll go on to round 18. This next round, if you uh, did not do the decrease, if you're going on to round 18 and did not decrease and you still have 18 stitches around, just single crochet around for this next round. But I'm going to go on to round 18, moving my stitch marker up. We are going to increase back to 18 stitches. So let's put two single crochets in this next stitch right here. One and two. And then put one single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then just repeat. So put two single crochets in this next stitch. One and two. 
and then one single crochet in the rest of the stitches, which should be seven stitches. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you should have 18 stitches at the end of round 18. Now what we're going to do is similar to what we did at the beginning here where we slip stitch to the next stitch and then chained up two and made double crochets, that's what we're going to do here. So basically, um, yeah, repeating round five, we are going to slip stitch into this next stitch. I'm going to move my stitch marker up, go into this next stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Okay, chain up two one and two, double crochet into this same stitch here. This is round 19. We are going to yarn over, go into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we are just going to double crochet into each stitch around. So that's this is round 19. And you should have 18 stitches at the end of this round. It is exactly like uh, round five, okay? So if you need to rewind this to see round five, you can, but I'm just going to do that and I'll meet you up for round 20. All right, finishing round 19, we're gonna slip stitch to the first double crochet stitch, okay? Just ignore this chain up two, just like we did previously. Just go into the double crochet, yarn over and pull through and pull through, just like that. Okay, so that was round 19. I'm going to remove my stitch marker now at this point, if I can. There we go. And going on to round 20, it's going to be a little different than this ribbing here. We're going to chain up one. And on this first double crochet stitch that we just slip stitched into, we are going to put a front post double crochet. So you know how to do that already. Front post double crochet on the first stitch. And on the second stitch here, we're going to front post double crochet, just like that. So front post double crochet, front post double crochet, and then on the next one, we're going to back post double crochet. So yarn over, go from the back. You know how to do back post stitches now. And then we're going to repeat that sequence of those three stitches. So front post, front post, back post. So in this next stitch here, we're going to front post, double crochet. Then on the next stitch right here, front post, double crochet. And then on the next stitch here, we're going to back post, double crochet. Okay, so front post, front post, back post. Front post, front post, back post. And we're going to do that all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to do that for round 20, and I'll meet you up for round 21. Okay, you want to end round 20 with a back post double crochet, and we are going to ignore this chain up one stitch here. We're going to go into the front post double crochet stitch right at the top here and slip stitch to close that round. Okay. And now, what we're going to do for rounds 21, 22, and 23, the next three rounds, we are going to chain one and just uh, repeat that last round. So front post double crochet on this first stitch and front post double crochet on the next stitch, then back post double crochet on this back post double crochet. So just front post double crochet on the front post double crochet stitches and back post double crochet on the back post double crochet stitches. And uh, we're going to do that for the next three rounds, then slip stitch to the beginning, the first stitch of this round, and then chain up one and do the same thing for the next round. And we're going to do that, this is round 21 now, I'm working on right now, and then I'm going to do that for this uh, sequence for rounds 21, 22, and 23. So when I finish round 23, I'll meet you up, we'll fasten this part off, and then we can go on to making the thumb. All right, when you finish round 23, just slip stitch to the first front post double crochet stitch, and we can fasten this part off. So if you want to, you can continue this. If you want the cuff of your mitten to be a little bit longer, you can just continue repeating that row. But I'm going to fasten off now, so I'm going to chain one, and then cut this yarn, and then pull it through that chain one there, and pull tight. Okay, and then you can sew in that end in a minute here. Um, if you want to, try this on. 
make sure it fits and everything looks good. So this is how your mitten should fit and look. Looks good so far. So we just have this little <laughs> thumb. If you want the thumb out for like texting and stuff, that's totally fine. But I'm going to add a little, um, little cover for the thumb here. So let's set this aside. I'll sew in that end in a minute here. I'll show you. I'm going to show you how to make the thumb first. Let's start off with a slip knot, just like we started this video tutorial here. Slip knot, insert your hook. And depending on the size of your thumb, if you have like smaller, I have a smaller thumb, I'm going to use six stitches. If you have a bigger thumb, you can use seven stitches or eight stitches around, okay? And I will, that will make sense in just a second here. We're going to chain two, one, and two. And in that second chain from the hook, we are going to put though that many stitches. We're going to put single crochets. So I'm going to single crochet six because my thumb is a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to go into that second chain from the hook, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay. And I also crochet a little looser too. So that might also um, factor into your, how big your thumb hole will be. So there's two going back in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, there's three, here's four, five, and six. So I'm happy with six stitches. If you want to, you can do seven or eight stitches in there, okay? Then what we're going to do is put in our stitch marker and just single crochet around in each stitch around for rounds two, through eight. So I'm going to do eight rounds of this, just going into this first stitch here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Next stitch, single crochet. And just single crochet all the way around for rounds two through eight. And if you need to continue on, if you have a longer thumb or something, you can even make more rounds, you know, go on to round nine, 10, or 11, depending on how long you want this to cover. Okay. So that was round two there, moving my stitch marker up and single crochet around for round three. So I'm going to do that until I finish round eight and then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to the next step. All right, when your thumb piece is as long as you want it to be, I did um, eight rounds. You can see here it should cover your whole thumb and even come down just a little bit here. Okay and it's stretchy enough and your thumb feels comfortable inside there, then you can uh, fasten this off. We're going to fasten off with a long tail to use for sewing. We're going to sew this onto our mitten. So go into this next stitch here, yarn over, pull through and through, and then chain one, cut your yarn kind of long for sewing, and then pull that all the way through and then pull tight. Okay, I'm going to remove my stitch marker here. Okay. So now what we're going to do here is the assembly. We are going to uh, flip this thumb inside out. Okay, that is going to be a little difficult, but this yarn is extra stretchy, so it's not going to, you know, uh, stretch it out or make it um, look weird. Just flip it inside out, just like that, and you have this long strand here. We're going to take our yarn needle, and again, I need to get new yarn needles because my giant yarn needle is missing right now so i have this like little tiny one so bear with me here while i get the yarn on the needle and this is extra bulky yarn so that doesn't help <laughs> so now i'm just going to go around the base of the stitches of round one and sew this in if you had done a magic ring on your starting points um, before round one on the mitten and this thumb, you wouldn't have to sew in this end here. You would just be able to cut it because it would already be sewn in. And there are tutorials out there on how to do a magic ring and everything. So you can start your next project working in the round, working, starting using a magic ring. So once that's closed, that hole will then be closed nicely and you're satisfied with that closure, you can trim this yarn just like that. Okay. Now as for this mitten, I'm going to set this aside here. It's still inside out. As for this mitten part, we are going to uh, pull this inside out as well. We're going to sew it inside out. So I'm just going to flip this inside out just like that. And you can also see this top thing here. I'll sew this in off cam. But uh, we have our thumb hole here. 
okay? So what we're going to do is yarn our needle with this long strand that we cut from our thumb here and yarn our needle with this strand. There we go. And then we're going to place it on the thumb hole of the mitten. Okay, so both pieces are inside out. I'm going to stick my hand, this hand, into the mitten and then I'm going to kind of hold this so you'll have to have some hand coordination here. We're going to start at the bottom corner right here, go into one of the stitches on the, on the mitten part, and then into the stitch on our thumb right here. And we're just going to whip stitch this around. So go into this next stitch right here, and this next stitch right here, and whip stitch. Okay. And there should be six stitches, but you can sew it around as many times as you need to to eliminate any holes or any gaps or anything. You're just sewing it around. So I'm going to go in this little section right here and just go through the same stitch here because that was not a stitch, it was just a random hole that I don't want to see. And then I'm in the next stitch right here and the next stitch right here and just pull and this next one here, okay, and we just have one left. right here and right here but I do have a little gap right here that I don't want to see so I am going to sew that in as well there we go okay then don't pull too tight because you want to be able to get your thumb into the space there. So just pull tight enough so that everything is secure and if you want to stretch it out, you can. Just like that. Okay. Then to fasten this off, we're going to go underneath a few of the stitches like this. Okay. Keep your thumb in the loop. Okay. And then come back around through that loop and then pull it tight. Okay, And you can do that once or twice and then what we're going to do is just sew in this end underneath the stitches all the way around the thumb. Okay, Again, don't pull too tight though because you want to be able to you know get your thumb in there and not suffocate it or make it you know lose any blood flow. <laughs> <laughs> to your thumb. <laughs> that would be bad. So I'm just sewing in this end now, just hiding it underneath these stitches now. Just going back and forth so it doesn't unravel or anything. It's just hidden. And it's on the inside of the mitten, so nobody's going to see it. So almost done. Perfect. Then once you're satisfied with it being sewed in, you can cut it. Okay. And then I just need to sew in this little end here. Then all you need to do is just rewind this video or follow the written pattern and make one more to have the pair set. Now there's no right or left hand because the seams are hidden. You can't really see the seams on here, only on the ribbing part very slightly. So that's why I have them both the same. So you can, you know, put each one either on the right hand or the left hand. There's no specific um, right or left handed mitten, which is nice. So you just have to repeat exactly what we did for this one and then flip it inside out or right side out now. And if it's difficult to get that thumb out, it shouldn't be too difficult. But you can always grab a hook and kind of pull it from the inside out in there. And then try it on, make sure it fits. 
awesome. Oh my goodness, it's super extra warm. That looks really nice. Make sure there's no gaps. Everything looks good. Looks good to me. And I have one more here already made. And there it is. The wonderfully warm mittens are complete and I can go out in these arctic temperatures of Wisconsin <laughs> now and still be extremely warm. There they are. Thank you so much for watching. Big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing the yarn today for this project. Big thank you to my dad back there for filming, editing, and doing all the photography. And thanks to you for watching and learning how to make these. If you did make these, please share your photos on Facebook, Instagram, hashtag Yarn Utopia. Follow me on Snapchat right away and snap me a picture of you in your mittens. I'd love to see them. I'm Yarn Utopia on Snapchat. So thanks for watching everyone. Stay warm and and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. Happy, happy hooking. <laughs> oh, and don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up on this video.